What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here, In today's mission, we're going to discuss the new footage and articles released about the early look at Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erdtree DLC. I say DLC, but honestly this is kind of more of an expansion. With loads of new content including legacy dungeons, tons of new weapons, and a large lineup of new bosses, Shadow of the Erdtree is shaping up to be a massive new addition to the base game, and one that has been my most anticipated release since it was announced. Elden Ring director and legendary From Software developer Hidetaka Miyazaki claims that the expansion should take 30 to 40 hours to complete. However, he's also known to vastly underestimate the time for completion on his games, especially Elden Ring. He once claimed the base game of Elden Ring should take 30 to 40 hours to complete without many detours, yet everyone knows the game was a massive undertaking, even if you knew exactly where to go and what to do already. But let's get into the details while we look at some spoiler-free footage from the early look. There will be minor spoilers for the new weapon types, some new weapons, and an already revealed boss, but I won't show anything that relates to story spoilers, as I didn't even want to see said spoilers for myself. I want to go into this almost completely blind, but when it comes to weapons and combat, I really just can't help myself. First up, let's get into the quick details. The previews have stated that there will be 10 plus main bosses and additional side bosses. And I can't wait for this part honestly, because the new bosses have been my most anticipated part of the game outside of the new weapons, especially Mesmer the Impaler. I'm hoping for another Malaketh or Millennia level of challenge from him, especially considering the fact that usually the DLC bosses from the Soulsborne series are some of the hardest in the entire series. The Divine Beast Dancing Lion, which we've already seen in the trailers for the game, is one of the new bosses and will be part of the Bellarat Tower Settlement Legacy Dungeon. Which speaking of Legacy Dungeons, Vati and the PlayStation blog writer confirmed that there were two Legacy Dungeons in the first area of Shadow of the Erdtree, with Bellarat being one and Castle Insus being the other. More on that later, but let's talk about the Divine Beast Dancing Lion. In this footage, you can see how agile the boss is, shooting lightning all over the boss arena and proving to be just as aggressive as any boss you'd find in the main game. While this may seem intimidating, it's apparently an early game skill check and one that seems to be similar to Margit in testing players that are attempting the DLC for the first time. Castle Ensis was the second legacy dungeon, and while there wasn't much information that I wanted to dive into due to spoilers, the twin Moon Knight was the other boss mentioned. Apparently this boss was extremely difficult, and according to PlayStation Blog, it has several tools to defeat the player with, including magic and glenstone infused blades. I can't wait. There are 8 new weapon types along with over 100 new weapons to go along with it. In the preview, we can see the reversed hand swords, hand-to-hand -hand fighting which I'm most excited about, a light great sword which I can't wait to get my hands on, a more offensive-minded shield, and a crossbow that fires multiple shots consecutively. We also see the perfumer weapons, which are similar to the bottles from the base game, but more weaponized for actual combat strategy. There also appear to be more throwable weapons like large throwing axes. I'm definitely interested in seeing what new weapons they come up with, because a lot of the weapons in the base game are incredibly designed. According to the PlayStation blog writer Eric Whalen, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, hand-to-hand -hand combat felt really great. He had this to say, Fighting barehanded might seem like madness in this kind of world, uh, yeah, but I found it remarkably effective. The blunt impact of the blows made it easier to break enemies' stance, leaving them open to a quick and deadly finisher. Martial arts was a joy to use, and if the other new categories are even half as fun to play with, tarnished are in for a treat with the new weapon types. That's the kind of madness I can't wait to unleash. I often thought about how awesome a barehanded run of the base game would be, and now having that option is going to be incredible. I'm also really excited for the Light Greatsword class of weapons, because while I'm a huge fan of the Greatsword in the base game, having the flow of combat of a lighter sword mixed with the weight and power of a Greatsword is going to be amazing. From the earlier preview footage, the character is gracefully spinning and flowing in and out of combat as if the sword is light as a feather, yet its size tells a different story. Between this and the hand-to-hand -hand combat, I can't wait to tackle the enemies in this expansion in all new ways, especially the bosses. According to those who have gone hands-on with the game, the enemies are faster, just as aggressive, and have all new mobility tools to defeat you with. So this should be an interesting time when you have to fight on rooftops and locations with limited places to retreat. They've also added a stackable buff item that gives you a boost to damage output, while also decreasing the amount of damage you take, if you want that option. I won't personally be using them, but I don't fault anyone for doing so either. Controversial, I know. Overall, I'm extremely excited for all of this to come in just a few short weeks and get my hands on all the new weapons, explore the new landscapes, and fight all the available bosses. June 21st is not going to get here fast enough. 
Elden Ring has taken over as one of my favorite games of all time, and this expansion has been my most anticipated release since its announcement. Let's just say that after beating Elden Ring six times and getting the Platinum, I've now completed every game in the Soulsborne series, including their DLCs, and even played more Souls-likes like Lords of the Fallen and Lies of P. So needless to say, I am addicted. I'll also be streaming Shadow of the Erd Tree sometime during the week of its release over on my Twitch channel. I'd love to have you over there, so follow the link in the description below, or head to twitch.tv slash soldier underscore first class to follow for live notifications. But for now, thanks for watching, and don't forget to smack that like button, and let me know in the comments section below what you're most excited for in Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. Subscribe to the channel and set those notifications to all so you never miss an upload. I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later, guys.